Well, the United Nations Security Council has voted unanimously on Wednesday to lift a nearly decade-old arms embargo and targeted sanctions on Eritrea. Uh, this move follows a resumption of harmonious relations with Ethiopia and improving of relations with Djibouti. Diplomats speaking on condition of anonymity say the 15-member council completed negotiations on Monday and agreed on a British drafted resolution to remove the sanctions which were imposed in 2009 after UN experts accused Eritrea of supporting armed groups in Somalia. Eritrea has denied the accusations. The resolution received nine votes in favor and no votes, uh, no vetoes by the United States, China, Russia, Britain or France. Now for more on what the lifting of sanctions by the UN means, I'm joined by VOA journalist at World uh, Tesfa Gabir, who covers East Africa. It's world, welcome back to Africa 54. Thank you, Mr. for having me. So first, uh, uh, as a person also from Eritrea, what does this feel like for an Eritrean for the sanctions to, to be lifted? What, do you, what are you hearing? Well, it um, can be a mixed feeling, uh, but mostly um, for those Eritreans who have been campaigning uh, for the lifting of these sanctions, it's a great excitement, mm -hmm. uh, including the government. Yeah. Uh, it has been uh, almost 10 years on arms and uh, other economic uh, sanctions on Eritrea. Yeah. And the impact was enormous, according to the Eritrean officials recently tweeted. Now, you were there in Eritrea not long ago. You came back. Uh, so first, what are some of the visible impacts uh, for, of, of these sanctions? Uh, to what extent have they really affected people's day-to-day -day livelihoods? I mean, it's an arms embargo, of course, we know that. But how, how did that have Not any only on arms embargo, basically it has uh, an impact on the economic uh, life of the country. Uh, basically, the, uh, the harassment of uh, mining companies mm -hmm. and uh, the cost of loans, insurance. Uh, when the government won't take a loan, uh, there's always a uh, uh, cost of insurance. Yes. And uh, all this... Um, uh, what they call economic impact was enormous. It was it cannot be overlooked. Mm -hmm. Now the what we're hearing is that um, this actually came because of the changing dynamics there. We're seeing a relationship has improved with Ethiopia and also in uh, Djibouti. Things are changing there. How what led to the changes which have actually been uh, now confirmed through the United Nations lifting of sanctions. The dynamism has been there for in the recent years, uh, but basically uh, after um, the current administration of Ethiopia accepted the Algiers agreement to implement the border decision with Eritrea, uh, Eritrea replied positively, and now the diplomatic uh, frenzy or excitement is very high. Uh, that can be uh, the main reason led to the peace in the region, where a security council also uh, reacted positively and that led to the lifting of this action. Yeah. So we know the tension was not only between Ethiopia and uh, Eritrea, there was also uh, Eritrea and Djibouti. Right. Uh, and, and, and so uh, in terms of the effect it has had on the people in the entire region, uh, you know, what would this mean now, just for the right. ordinary citizens? Right. right. Um, as you know, um, the sanctions were uh, because of what well, the Security Council said that Eritrea was supporting uh, the armed groups in Somalia, as well as uh, refusal of its troops from the border uh, with Djibouti uh, after they fought in 2008. Um, so basically now um, the dynamism of the region has been changed recently and uh, the uh, presidents of Eritrea and Djibouti met in Saudi Arabia recently and they agreed to, to tower to improve their uh, relations. Um, so the, the excitement, the diplomatic friends that they said is not as, as, um, as big as has happened with Ethiopia, yeah. but it looks like the relationship has been improved with Djibouti also. Okay, so this might have some uh, positive impact on the overall economy of the country and also uh, the geopolitical uh, d d dynamics. But uh, in terms of uh, the lives of the people of Eritrea, there have been other concerns, and you were there in Ethiopia, but I mean in Eritrea. Right. There have been concerns over the years about uh, the system of government, uh, perhaps the issue of democracy and transparency, human rights. Is any of that changed in the last few months, uh, at least 
from what you saw? The hope among Eritreans is very high. Uh, they are hoping the changes uh, happening in Ethiopia uh, will lead uh, also a change at home in, in Eritrea. Uh, many Eritreans are hoping that, um, especially they are asking questions whether um, the national service uh, in Eritrea uh, is going to be changed uh, somehow, the uh, national service program, um, which uh, is compulsory, and because of that, many have been subjected perfect. to a lot right, of persecution. Right, right. right. because um, not only that, um, the political system can, the hope in the political system can also be changed. Yeah. But basically, at the moment, the priority what's happening now is in economic impact. Yeah. They, they just feel in the economic impact, the economic uh, relief somehow. Yeah. Um, the, the, the cost of the consumer goods, especially mm -hmm. uh, non durable uh, um, goods like yeah. food, yeah. Um, the cost has been very low now. Mm -hmm. The reconnection of uh, Ethiopian Eritrean. Uh, in the border it's going to improve that is happening right now yeah. so Thank you. basically the political change and the question is very slow yeah but the hope is high well let's hope things change and the hope uh, turns into reality thanks a lot to Walder for joining us today thank you for having me it's a pleasure well our viewers journalist uh, to all the uh,